Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Polestar Driver. My name is Sean and this week I have been using a better route planner inside the Polestar 2 and I've probably driven nearly 400 miles across multiple trips in this week and so here are my thoughts of um, a better route planner so the first thing I did this week was I did a trip, basically a round trip, which was a test. So I started at point A and then I went in a big circle around uh, Sussex. And you can see here on the map, this was the route that I took. And I created the route in a better route plan on my desktop, which um, I created it by just adding multiple waypoints by clicking on the map on the roads that I wanted to go on. So here you can see uh, the route and it's about 58 miles and it took roughly an hour or just over an hour to complete the route. So the first thing to note is that the when you're driving in the car um, a better route planner doesn't understand the start and the end points and calculate the battery percentage according to that. It only calculates the battery percentage at your next waypoint. So you'll see on this video here, uh, we started off uh, from point A and then, then the first waypoint is uh, a few miles away. But it was uh, so the battery is only showing as basically one or two percent difference to the start battery percent so it would be useful if there was a switch in there which would say calculate the battery based on the start and the end points in the plan uh, that would be more useful than calculating to each waypoint or at least you should have the option to calculate to the next waypoint or to the end of the plan. So here's a quick trick that I found out when I started to use a battery planner. If you are looking at it in a light mode, then you cannot see the information bar at the top of the infotainment system on the Polestar 2. So you can't see uh, the LTE slash 4G, you can't see the time or anything else along the top bar there. Now, if you want to see this while you're using a battery route planner, it's very easy you just go into settings and you find dark mode and you set it to permanently dark mode then you will see that uh, information bar at the top of the screen as you can see here so overall i'd say a better route planner is adequate it's uh, it's not great it's got a lot of bugs still um, and quite often uh, it gets stuck with a never-ending circle when you're trying to uh, plan or go somewhere and uh, when that never ending circle comes up effectively you have to kill the app and then uh, restart it to get it uh, to wake up again. A lot of the responses uh, are slow so quite often I'm sitting there before I've started the car or gone anywhere just planning the route and you click on something and nothing happens and you click on it again and still nothing happens and uh, in the meantime all of these clicks that you're doing are, st are storing up in the background and when the application catches up executes one of those uh, instructions with regard to the map information and live data um, it is not great um, I did a journey which was taking me down um, a road which I know was closed it's been closed for almost a month already yet a better route planner still said I must go that way so I followed it until I got to the closed road and you can see here where it was closed even though a better route planner was showing a blue line where I could continue down that road so I love uh, Live information is not great. Sometimes the planning, uh, the route it plans is a bit different to what Google would plan. 
uh, and in some cases this is a better route and in some cases it's a worse route. So I'm not sure exactly how they do that but uh, that the whole map mapping and navigation part can be improved a lot. The maps don't look great. Um, they're very basic at the moment. I did notice that both uh, Google Maps and a better route planner are relatively conservative when it comes to um, planning a journey and the state of charge when you get to your destination. So I went uh, to Cambridge on uh, Friday and I had 100% battery when I left home. I arrived in Cambridge with 52%. So in theory, I should have been able to get all the way home on the remaining 52%. Yet a better route planner was suggesting that I have to stop along the way and get a seven minute fast charge on the 150 kilowatt charger. I guess it doesn't take into account that that charger only delivered 30 kilowatts, so I was there for longer than seven minutes. But when I looked in Google Maps, Google also suggested that uh, I needed a charging stop on the way home. So the one thing I do like about the app is that it shows you the live charging numbers. So here you can see I stopped off at uh, BP Pulse to collect some of my free Polestar 2 uh, credit. Um, and I stopped at a 150 uh, kilowatt charger. There were three of them there. And I was the only one using any of the chargers, so I wasn't sharing any kilowatts with anyone else. Yet the best I achieved on this charge was 30 to 31 kilowatts, which is very low, seeing as it's a 150 kilowatt charger. Plus, I had just driven for over an hour at 70 miles an hour um, from Cambridge down uh, to this BP charger. So it's not even like the battery would have been very cold and the temperature was not too bad. It was somewhere around 12 to 14 degrees. So very poor performance on this uh, charge experience. I don't know whether it's the car or whether it is the BP charger, but either way, it's not good enough. That's it for this week. Uh, thanks for watching. This is a nice short video just uh, giving my view of a better route planner, um, having used it for the last week, uh, doing multiple trips, adding up to over 400 miles. If you've enjoyed these videos, please give it a big thumbs up and uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you are notified when uh, any new videos are coming out. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you again soon.